Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another What's Wrong With This One. I feel like it's been some time since I've done a video like this. Now the car today is a 2013 Nissan Qashqai, 1.5 DCI I think. And the fault we've got is the red engine light is on. Um, when I picked this up, traction control and ABS light came on. It was slow as hell, no boost. Um, was hard work getting it home, I think four or five miles from where I picked it up. You know, the owner of the vehicle to my house. So yes, an interesting drive home. Um, I've already scanned it, obviously when I picked it up. Um, but it was, yeah, it was dark wet windy so this is the first obviously day i've had off work it's the weekend so yeah the codes we've got are p0471 exhaust back pressure sensor one we've got p2002 dpf uh below threshold or efficiency yeah below threshold and we've got p2263 which just says turbo charger system there's a couple of other there's a clutch switch i think and somewhere else i'll put the picture up now of the cords uh, so yes first thing obviously there could be several faults with this i don't really know the history um so yeah obviously if, if it's not your vehicle if you're doing it for a customer uh yeah best thing to do is just let them know keep them in the loop tell them you know we've got however many faults these three faults there could be more than one thing causing it um so the first thing i'm going to do is check the exhaust back pressure i did look on live data on my scanner when i scanned it but there was no um no line for exhaust differential pressure it had ex exhaust flow in the DPF, however, that isn't how I'm used to seeing that data. I think that is obviously going to be read by the pressure sensor, but I don't know whether the reading that was there was good or not. So I'm going to physically measure it at the DPF with, well, you can probably do it two ways. You can use one of these, a manometer, which will measure differential pressure, or you could probably use a Mitivac. <clears throat> yeah this probably won't show a reading if the pressure is good at idle we should be sort of below 10 or 15 millibar of pressure and this doesn't go that low but if the pressure is too much we might get a reading I think 50 kPa is 500 millibar, so we maybe might just get a reading on one of the first two red lines. There's a number of ways this could have gone, isn't there? So <clears throat> I think on these they have a vaporizer or a fifth injector, which obviously puts diesel into the DPF when it requires a regeneration. If that is blocked, it isn't going to regenerate and yeah it's going to become blocked exhaust pressure is going to build up the flow in the exhaust is going to be restricted that's not going to allow the turbocharger to spool up as it usually would could have gone that way or the turbo could have you know stopped working seized whatever um <clears throat> that could have broken first and i think the turbos obviously generate a bit of heat. The engine maybe needs that heat to carry out a regeneration. If if the heat isn't there, it won't, you know, burn off the soot. So it could have gone that way. So really, we need to check the exhaust pressure. If it's high, um, obviously clean the DPF out. I'm going to check the vaporizer, make sure it's not blocked, make sure the glow plug is working. Uh, just check the resistance on that, I think. 
see if we can prime it yeah maybe do that first and then see whether we get boost maybe leave the vaporizer out and if some of the exhausts can get out that way and the turbo sort of comes back a bit we maybe know the turbo's okay yeah i don't know which way i'm gonna go but obviously first i'm gonna measure the exhaust pressure so enough yapping let's get cracking so i was hoping to be able to do this without it on the lift but That's the exhaust pressure sensor there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there, my torch is just over it. So I'm gonna to have to go underneath it, I think. I don't think there's an under tray though, so that could be good news. Okay, so DPF pressure sensor. I've disconnected it here. I've disconnected it. Where does it go to? Hello? Let me see. <clears throat> Here. Blown through it. This rubber pipe isn't blocked. That's something to check, obviously. Um, now I've got it hooked up to the manometer. Uh, I, might, I don't think it's quite long enough. Will it reach that other side? Might reach that other side actually. And then we can see what happens when we start it up. So it's on millibar. Turning key now. Straight away. It's over, yeah, 200 millibar. I don't know what the max reading is on this. So that DPF is definitely blocked. Um, I'm hoping that an off-the-shelf cleaner is going to be enough, obviously, to clean it. Um, we'll have to see. I've got my local motor factors. I've got some service bits to pick up now. I'll get a DPF cleaner. Uh, when I get back, I'm going to take out the vaporizer, make sure that is not blocked, make sure the glow plug is still, the glow plug circuit is still. Um, yeah, fine as it should be. I'm not sure what the ohm reading should be of the glow plug. I know on the transits and Fords that have the vaporizer, I think it's between 1.6 and 2.4 ohms. Whether this is similar, I don't. I mean, if it reads open circuit, we know it's fucked, don't we? Um, but yeah, get some DPF cleaner and then test that vaporizer, and then obviously consult with owner of vehicle let them know dpf's blocked vaporizer's blocked if it is um we need to carry out this dpf clean uh possibly replace the vaporizer i might scope the dpf pressure sensor get my mitty vac on it see if the pressure increases right, down here is the vaporizer if you follow this pipe I don't know if you can see it, it's tucked under there. I've disconnected the fuel line here. And I've just put my own bit of rubber pipe on up to this mitty vac. This, this vaporizer should be free and clear. So if I apply, I've got it on vacuum, it doesn't matter. You could do pressure, you could do vacuum, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna squeeze it. that is holding vacuum oh it's also holding pressure 100 kPa is a thousand millibar which is yeah a bar just over a bar now unless this has got should look at a wiring diagram really I'm assuming it's just got a two pin connector on the vaporizer, which will be for the glow plug. I'm going to just have a deeper look and see. Right then, I was trying to get this vaporizer out and it hasn't gone to plan. It's well seized in this bracket, so I've had to take the bracket off. 
I'll have to maybe get it to work in the vise to get that out. Uh, but look at this part. Can you see that? That is pretty blocked up. So I'm happy with my, yeah, conclusion, procedure, process. Uh, Obviously, DPFs shouldn't really block up. Um, if they, if they are, there is obviously a reason why, and I think we may have found the reason this one was blocked. But I mean, it could be a temperature sensor that's faulty, pressure sensor that's faulty. I do need to just double check this one, um, apply some pressure to it, see if the voltage on the signal wire sort of goes up and down in correlation with the pressure. Um, yeah, what else? Math faults, EGR faults can cause uh, yeah, a DPF not to regenerate. If coolant temp sensor is not reading right, and it obviously doesn't think the engine is up to temperature, it probably won't regenerate. There's yeah, lots and lots of different factors. Some glow plugs on some vehicles are responsible for getting exhaust gas up to temperature. That can cause it, so yeah there's more to look at than you would you know think in the first place so yeah the plan is get one of these unblock this part i've got some dpf cleaner so we need to clean that that's going to be a separate video like a will it work style video um i'm going to check the dpf pressure sensor now if that voltage is reading what it should be, uh, it'll be five volts. There'll be five volt feed and earth and a signal wire, which will probably read from between half a volt and four and a half volts. And we'll just see if that voltage moves with the pressure. Oh, another thing. Let's do it. Now that I've got this out, I'm going to see whether, now that exhaust pressure can sort of get away somewhere, clear the faults, and I'm going to see whether the turbo we get a bit of boost back um, and if we do then I'm 99% certain the turbo is fine if we don't then that might be something we have to look into as well Whew. dear dude do you want to know the mileage well that I think it's done 93,000 miles 93,323 miles and I would <laughs> half recommend the customer to do uh, an oil and filter change as well so yeah uh, we'll see i'll price some bits up and see where we're at right so i'm back probing this what is it orange wire i've just earthed on this gearbox ignition's on and we've got 4.98 volts i'm going to move to the middle wire hopefully right there was nothing on that middle wire so it's probably an earth I've got this green wire and we've got half a volt 500 millivolts I'm just gonna apply some pressure with the MITI vac so one volt is 3 psi 1.6 volts is 6 psi 2.2 volts 9 psi 2.8 volts 12 3.3 volts is 15 3.8 volts 18 4.2 volts 21 and then we max out 4.58 volts so because I think the pressure in that DPF is way higher than this that fault cord we had it's going to be because the voltage is stepped outside of obviously a preset threshold release the pressure 
and we're back down to half a volt. I'm going to now move this earth into the middle wire just to see whether we get the same results on the multimeter. Um, ideally, I want to be probing at the ECU just to confirm that that voltage signal is going all the way to the ECU. But I'm going to hope the wiring is fine. I don't know where the ECU is at at the minute. Obviously, we know it needs a DPF clean. We know that vaporizer is blocked, so for now we'll do that. We know the sensor's good. If the wiring is faulty, I don't mind, I can sort that, bit of solder in, put a new piece of wire in. It's not really much extra cost to the owner. Yeah, so I'll move this earth and we'll confirm the voltage is the same. Right, so that's two back probes in there now. We're back on five volts. Just give a quick squeeze. Yep, lovely. So I'm now going to clear the fault cords on this. Obviously I've got the vaporizer unplugged and I've unplugged the solenoid for the fuel supply as well. And uh, hopefully we get some boost when we go out for a test drive. So this auxiliary fuel injector, it's unplugged. Exhaust fuel cut valve, that's unplugged. That is probably because I've been fucking around with the Mitivac on the sensor. So let's clear cords. I've got the Clio hooked up with some jump leads because I uh, flattened the battery. No cords, so we'll give it a start and then we'll see whether we've got a bit of turbo action. Obviously now that excess exhaust pressure has got somewhere to go, hopefully the turbo can spool up a bit and yeah, give me some indication as to whether it's working or not. That's my theory anyway. Right then, the result of that was a good one I think. Live data showed about uh, 1500 millibar of boost pressure. Uh, which is one and a half bar, which is yeah 500 millibar more than previous. It wasn't really getting above atmospheric. It felt a lot better to drive as well. Uh, so yeah, I think clean the DPF, new vaporizer, bosh it back together, make sure it regenerates on its own accord. So bit of a test drive. It's going to need some fuel because it's got well it, red lights on. So yeah, I'll price some bits up and then get them fitted and then I'll come back when we're yeah, clearing cords and yeah, no, I'll show you the clean. We need to show you the clean. See you in a couple of days. Now then, it's a few days later now. I've got the new vaporizer with electrical connection. <laughs> um. Yeah, these weren't available next day. There was a little wait, maybe five days, a week. So, yeah, it's in there now. I've put a bit of copper grease around the washer and, like, the body of the vaporizer itself just to uh, assist the next person that comes to take it out, I suppose. The clamp and that's back on. I'm just going to bolt all this up. Obviously, these three nuts. Just one unit. First, though, I'm going to, obviously... Put the fuel supply on, plug it in, and then see if I can activate it on my scanner and see if a bit of we get a bit of diesel coming out of this port. If we do, that's good news. It means I can just put it back together. And then we'll crack on with the DPF clean. Um, I've got some Manol DPF cleaner in an aerosol. Um, it was two tins for 23 quid, I think, off eBay. Um, I have used some Manol stuff before. They're engine oils, and I think some of their engine flushes, I think, I've used, and I've never had any issues. Yeah, f yeah. If you, I used to get, the, like, 20 litres of engine oil back in the day because, you know, I had, yeah, 
plenty of vehicles to, uh, I guess, service or whatever. Uh, never had any troubles, so yeah. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get this plugged on and see if we can get some fuel out of it. Right then, I've got this vaporizer loosely plumbed in. Fuel pipe there with the blue tabs, electrical connector on in the black. I maybe should have taken it out of this housing to do it because the port is obviously facing the rear of the vehicle. Can't see it. I've got a mirror I'm going to use, but obviously I won't be able to hold the torch, the mirror, and the camera all at the same time. So we're just going to go in engine. I've got my yeah, scanner plugged in, ignition's on. We're going to go in functional tests, actuator tests, and it's probably going to be DPF injector or injector solenoid valve. Probably do both. Do this one first. Click start. Is that this one? Oh, there we are. Something clicked, did you hear that? Okay. Let's do this one. Oh, you can hear that. So that's working. Nice, did we get fuel? Right, I didn't get any fuel out of the injector, but what I've got it's fuel at this pipe again. And obviously that all leaked away, pissed away when I took it off the first time. So that, I think it's gonna be good enough for me. We've heard the injector operating, doing the active tests. I've heard the solenoid operating, doing the active tests. So yeah, I'm just gonna put it back together, get the DPF cleaner in it. And that is that. <clears throat> so this is what the spray pattern looks like. I'm going in through this pipe here. The only thing I'm worried about is it's sort of, there's a right angle there. I've just tried to get this sensor out because this is a more favorable angle, but it's well stuck. So we'll have to make do, Let's see what happens. Right, we're in. And yeah, puffs of 10 second intervals. Hopefully it just doesn't come back out of this pipe. I'll come back when the can's empty, I think. Go on, we'll do one more puff. You know, I'm starting to get a bit of a, a sooty liquid out of this pressure pipe now. I think that's because, obviously, this tube is just going to be sort of butted right up against there. So there's not really, yeah. I'm hoping it's filling this up nicely as well. I think we've probably done half a can, perhaps. Just give it another. Yeah. But it's dissolving the soot lock. Fingers crossed, it's decent. <clears throat> That's probably about three quarters left in this can. And I'm just going to give it a squirt and just look at the colour of the form that comes out of this pipe now. Pretty much white as it is there. So it's definitely 
cleaned that pipe. Hopefully we have the same results in there. This can's pretty much empty now. I think we're going to be on the last squirt. is one dpf two dpf three dpf four dpf five dpf six dpf seven dpf eight dpf nine dpf ten dpf empty yet. I think we're on dregs now. Not much happening. I want to think that's that's it. Now I'm intrigued to see how clean this pipe's going to be when I pull it out. on it apart from the little end of cock. Yeah, it's empty. Alright, what's next? Trap it up, do we? I don't know. Right then. Can is empty. What does it say to do next? Regeneration must be initiated manually. I won't be able to do that because the fuel level is uh, yeah, on empty, the light's on, so it probably won't do a regen. We have to get 30 quid's worth of fuel. What I've done is I've blanked the pressure pipe with one of these. I'm going to just start it up now. See if we get any form out the back. I think I'm going to go for a drive. I'm going to drop it, get some fuel, go for a spin, and then I'll put the pressure sensor back on, clear the faults, and then see if we can do like a dynamic regeneration. Uh, I don't like doing static ones. If we can get it to do it whilst we're driving. That'd probably be best. So yeah, let's get some fuel. I don't know if something is starting to happen here. Obviously the other two tins I've got, it sort of saves on how they work. And what they do is they lower the combustion temperature of the soot in the DPF, so it doesn't have to get as hot to, to burn it off, basically. I'm assuming this one works in the same way. So we're gonna go to the petrol station now and uh, we'll see if it drives any better before, you know, without clearing cords or anything. It'll be interesting to see. I'll tell you what, it already drives better. I had a little bit of boost there then. We had none of that when I picked it up. It was flat as fuck. But it's wanting to wanting to give me some. Oh yes. Let's get 
some fuel in it, get some temperature into it. Very sharp. And then we'll get that pressure sensor back on. One thing to watch is that the foam the cleaner doesn't go up the pressure pipe and then into the pressure sensor. Because that could ruin the sensor. Um, which is why, kind of why I'm, oh, and look at the smoke out the back. Oh, it is, can I? Look at that, can you see that? Oh, it's definitely cleaning something, isn't it? Woohoo! I've just pulled over, what I'm gonna do, can you see that? I'm just going to drive it till this smoke clears, I think, and then we'll go to, uh, yeah, get some fuel. Right, I've just driven from the cattle market to the beach here, a couple of miles, and no smoke there whatsoever. It drives loads better. We've got boost again. The engine light has come on, but... It's not for a DPF efficiency fault. It's exhaust gas pressure sensor. Obviously, it's not plugged in and we're driving. So the ECU's seeing, you know, the engine speed, the RPM, uh, not, not the engine speed, engine speed, vehicle speed, stuff like throttle position. It'd be seeing the DPF temperature go up. But yeah, it's not seeing the pressure do anything. So we're gonna go back now going to put the pressure sensor on and then get a bit of fuel check the pressures and then we should be fucking mint right Woo! got the manometer hooked up not going to use the mitivac because obviously oh what's happened there the gauge isn't sensitive enough what's happened to that yeah, so we'll go with this. Just start it. So it's still bouncing around a bit, but let's increase the revs. Obviously last time, two and a half grand it was off the scale and now that's nice right so then pressures were good um, I don't know what I was expecting from that cleaner but bloody hell for what did it work out like 11 pounds something per can well worth it and you don't even have to take the DPF off right now I'm going to put the pressure sensor back on put some fuel in it and then see if it will do a regeneration on its own um, if it does and the temperatures get to sort of five six hundred degrees EGR should close and then yeah we know it can regenerate it probably will but it's obviously good to double check before I give it back to the owner so yeah I'll do that now nice right I'm just pulled over looking at some live data this is the number I'm interested in at the minute gas flow in DPF I'm pretty sure when I first looked at it it was in the 40 um, 40 meters cubed an hour uh, now it's obviously below 20 meters cubed an hour I'm pretty sure this was towards 80. I can't remember if I... Yeah. Did I look at data? I'm sure I did. I don't know if I recorded the data. And that's the problem. Um, I'm going to look at the boost pressure. See if we should be getting close to 2000 millibar on the boost. Uh, I'll get rid of some of these so we can see it all on one screen. Right, so what I'm looking for on here. Obviously I want this boost pressure to go to about, well, close to 2,000 millibar. I want these 
but I'll mainly this temperature upstream particle filter temp to go to well it wants about 560 degrees I'm looking for this this is the DPF injector I don't know what RC stands for and I'm assuming the comp means command so when it starts to regenerate this percentage should obviously increase uh, there's no EGR data so I can't tell whether EGR valve is open or closed I'm pretty sure usually EGR valves close during a DPF regeneration um, yeah we'll just drive and see what happens gonna finish my meatball wrap in the shell garage mm, it's not bad then we'll get driving Come on. pressure doesn't appear to be doing anything that is not good why not and why are we not getting a fault code for it Right, boost pressure's moving now when I just sit here at idle. Temperature now, upstream of particle filter, 220. Right, just fucking try again. I don't know what happened then. Go, go, go. Boost pressure up to 1900 millibar. So that is doing something. Okay. Boost pressure, fourth gear. 1500 revs, we're at 1300 millibar. 1400, 1500, 16, 17. 18, 2, oh that went over 2 bar then, a boost, woo! Great. Temperatures, upstream of DPF, 335 degrees Celsius. Is it going to do a regen? Coolant temp, 69. 68, it's dropping. And when it does a regen, the soot should go down a little bit. It's 23.6 grams. I'm not sure what it'll drop to. And this temperature in here is a bit warm. Particle filter temperature. I'm waiting for this DPF injector to start, you know, giving us a bit of activity. And we know it's wanting to sort of regenerate. It's trying to inject a bit of fuel in there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Upstream particle filter tent, 520 degrees. Is it getting ready to do a regeneration? No, it's dropping again, 490. Right, this coolant temperature should be well into the 80s by now. We're stuck at 67.9. <clears throat> so I think we've got a thermostat issue, or the temp sensor's not reading correctly. Uh, yeah, it's probably not gonna do a regen. I might see if I can DPF service regeneration. Do I want to do it? I don't know. So there's a second option mm. that could be the fault. Water pump not circulating. This should be spewing coolant out. It isn't. It only dribbles a bit if you lower it, lowering the top of the radiator. This in here is stone cold. That should be engine temperature yeah not good right then this might be a to be continued episode um just gonna drive it back home now and see if that coolant temperature does anything does anything more than 70 degrees i don't think it will uh so we're gonna have to yeah have a look at the thermostat probably if that's stuck open then it's not gonna yeah get up to temperature as it should it's just gonna circulate through the radiator and everything um, and really it should just be round the cylinder head and heater matrix until you know 90 whatever degrees when the thermostat opens yeah so that's it see you maybe in part two I'm gonna go back and let the customer know um, then it's up to them, isn't it? I mean, yeah, if they don't have it done, then we're gonna be here in this situation a month from now, two months from now, I don't know how long, two weeks. Depends how often we use the car, doesn't it, I suppose. Anyway, cheers for watching, see you in the next one. Bye.